Most people in Texas have been around guns since they were small children. You grew up with guns. Please, don't pull it. It was just a, a, a rite of passage for most young men. But that's it. It's what people did. It was a good time. People would have barbecues and shoot on the prairie. Get more potatoes on it. You like it? Nah, I'll fight you for it. God and guns is exactly what sums up Waco, Texas. I have firearms. Everybody, everybody has firearms. Texas has open carry and concealed carry. Okay, and I'm never going to pull my weapon unless someone pulls one on me. Just to go around and brandishing weapons, that ain't happened. And that, that wasn't Mount Carmel either. Those people weren't that way. Every once in a while, we would get a report that there was gunfire out there. David Koresh preached from the very beginning that he wanted to militarize his followers. And he started going to gun shows and purchasing huge amounts of weaponry, ammunition. He thought that the end of all time, the end of the world would come in a great battle between the faithful and the beast of Babylon, who he specifically identified as the government of the United States of America. It's war. These governments of this world are coming to an end. Go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and muse in your mind and see what happens to you. They would shoot and have target practice. And, and there was always somebody up at the guard post 24 hours a day with a gun. You know, all you were taught was this is what this gun looks like. This is what this helicopter looks like. When you see it, this is what you do. You're supposed to go inside quickly and tell an adult, and they would sound some kind of alarm. We would talk about guns and how you didn't want to stick the gun to your temple because you might live. You wanted to like stick it in your mouth and point up. Um, you know, and, and now looking back, I can see, well, why would we have been talking about that stuff if, if it wasn't a reality? or if we weren't planning to do it. They prepared you for war, because that's what the belief was. Everything had to be military style. My mom's job was to sew the vest, bulletproof vests that they were using for protection. There was just this level of an impending doom. Did Jesus tell the apostles to carry a sword with you? Yes. Peter cut off a centurion's ear, Jesus put it back on. So in a time of war, nations against nations, when someone hurts somebody else because the government says to fight. In his theology, that it was the responsibility of the elect, of the faithful, to fight as hard as they could, to take up arms. And that would bring down the host of angels that would bring about the end of time. Well, he'd been saying for such a long time that they were gonna come for us. And then they did. They came, and they did exactly what he said. What they what he said they were going to do. One of the reasons that the Branch Davidians started to get investigated by the ATF was because one day a delivery man for UPS delivered a box of grenades to David Koresh, and the box broke open. When the sheriff's office received this information, we shared it with ATF. You start wondering about. What is this all about? And you start thinking about the, the automatic gunfire reports that you'd had a year or two earlier. And you're wondering what exactly is happening out there. It was around June 1992, and I was actually working the ATF hotline desk. And my buddy called me up and says, listen, I've got an investigation. It involves a group of people, it's like a religious group, a cult. The investigation was into illegal firearms manufacturing, and then there was also allegations that child abuse was being conducted by David Koresh. We're going to remove that animal from these children. The operation was named Operation Trojan Horse. There were 77 agents actually involved in the initial raid on the compound. It was more than a simple search warrant. Honestly, it felt more like a military operation. We had kind of staked out a mock compound. And then over the course of a couple of days, we ran through a series of mock search warrant executions. We were to go up and secure the arms room and the Koresh's bedroom. 
the Dallas team was scheduled to go in through the front door and go up to the second floor and clear the second floor, and that's where we understood most of the women and children would be. The Houston team would clear the bottom floor. The men all lived on the first floor. The rest of the team would go out and form a perimeter around the construction area and keep anybody working in the construction area from getting back into the compound. We were outgunned to the max. So needing to get inside and, and make sure that we kept them from getting to their weapons was extremely important. Even though I'd run hundreds of warrants with the special response team, nothing to this scale. Usually we'd just be hitting a single house with maybe one or two people inside, but this time we were hitting a large structure that had as many as 150 people on the inside. He just happened to have a really, really ridiculously stupid plan that put him in that position, which should never have happened. Several of us agents looked around at each other and said, no matter what, this is going, because look at how much money is being spent. The undercover part of the investigation involved ATF setting up across the street from the uh, compound. They put in four 40-year-old ATF officers to pretend that they were students. And when they were moving, they didn't move in furniture, they moved in equipment, that it was in cases. So it was very suspicious, needless to say, right off the bat. They installed several special agents in there. One of them in particular was uh, Robert Rodriguez. Robert Rodriguez was an ATF officer who they planted into the Branch Davidians to join the Branch Davidians at the very beginning of their investigation. Uh, he was there to try to infiltrate the, uh, the Branch Davidians to find out the extent of their engagement with automatic weapons, grenades, and things of that nature. Robert Rodriguez's role, I think, is much bigger than anybody really anticipated because he was really the voice of what was going on inside Mount Carmel. He was witness to the control that David Koresh had over all these people. If you sin against the Holy Spirit, Christians, can it be forgiven? No. Do you feel you're special? Well, if I'm special, it's because people think I'm special. The FBI underestimated the charismatic control David Koresh had over this faith community. David Koresh was training soldiers for God. These were religious zealots. These are people who believe that the apocalypse is going to come when the American government starts it. That played right into their own understanding of what God's teaching was and how history was going to unfold. Every step they took played into the apocalyptic vision of the Branch Davidians.